This is a simulation model that we use to practice simulations of vaginal births. We use these models to practice and to help train others. Here you can see the baby's head starting to crown. We place our hands on the perineum, which is the area between the vulva and the anus that stretches for extra support. We also have fingers on the baby's head to help that ensure that it delivers in a controlled way and doesn't just come out too quickly. Once the baby's head is out, we guide it down while mom's pushing so the top shoulder can come under the pubic bone. Once that's delivered, we guide the baby up so the bottom shoulder and the rest of the baby can deliver. And there you have it. Happy birthday, baby. Hope you enjoyed watching that simulation. With my last birth simulation getting 75 million views, I thought it was time to show you a breech delivery. This is when instead of the baby being head down, their feet or bottom or what's presenting. In the US, we usually deliver these by C-section unless the breech baby is the second baby of a twin delivery or in some other rare circumstances. We guide the feet while the patient pushes. We don't pull, but instead aim to keep the back facing up to make the birth easier. Oh, and that thing on the baby's bottom? It's where a tool can be placed to help the assistant above hold on to the baby when we're doing a head down delivery. Once the baby is delivered up to the shoulder blades, we sweep one arm out at a time. As you can see, me reaching in and doing that here, and then I'll go ahead and rotate the baby and do the same thing with the other arm. Then we guide the head out by flexing it down. And there you have it. Keep in mind breech births aren't usually this easy and why we often recommend a C-section, but this baby did great. This is me demonstrating a vacuum assisted vaginal birth. You can see the vacuum here and we place it on the baby's head. We can use it in an emergency if the baby is not doing well and needs to come out quickly or the patient's exhausted from pushing. There's lots of safety criteria to make sure we do this correctly, such as placing it in exactly the right spot in order to guarantee that it will work and only using just the right amount of suction. Here you can see me, I have it placed and I'm checking to make sure there's no tissue trapped in between the baby's head and the vagina. I'm now pumping up the suction, which helps the cup stay on the baby's head only going into the green zone that you can see there. And then with the patient pushing and me gently guiding the baby out, we have a delivery. Now, don't be alarmed when you see this baby's head. It's a model, it's not connected to anything, but I guarantee you it works. It is normal to see some swelling on the baby's head after this is removed, but that goes down within 24 hours. Drop your questions below. Let's see what a forceps assisted delivery looks like. These are forceps, AKA the salad tongs. I don't call them that, but some people do. They're a tool that we can use to help a baby be born more quickly, such as if the patient can't push or if the baby is in real distress. We place each blade one at a time, very carefully making sure it goes in just the right spot. Now you might be looking at these and thinking, oh my goodness, is that going to rip the vagina? And while it is true that you can have some more severe tears with these, it's not always the case, especially if done by experienced providers, but it's always a risk benefit that we talk about a C-section versus using forceps. You can see here that the blades are now locked together and I'm feeling to make sure they're in the right place. I now have the patient push and I help to guide the baby out. Remember, this is only a model. There's no entire baby in there, but that's it. Let's see what a shoulder dystocia looks like, which is a complication that happens in about 1% of births. And it's an emergency and we prepare for it. This is when the head delivers, but the shoulder is stuck behind the pubic bone. When it's recognized, we have the patient stop pushing and we try some maneuvers. First is called super pubic pressure. And yeah, I'm pushing to see if I can help dislodge that shoulder. You can see it didn't work. So I go in and I try to rotate the shoulder around to slip under the pubic bone and I see if it worked. Nope, it didn't. Now I'm going for the posterior arm or the arm underneath. I'm going to try and sweep it out and see if that makes more room to let that top shoulder pop out. I know it might look gnarly, but at this point, this baby is not getting the oxygen they need. So I go in, I sweep, I try again. See, yep, I got it. So now that makes more room for that top shoulder to come out and here comes baby. Okay, what questions do you have about shoulder dystocia? Let's show a simulation for a Jada device, which is something we use to control bleeding after giving birth. Pretend this is a uterus that just gave birth. One way that the uterus stops bleeding is by contracting down. If this doesn't happen, you can get something called a postpartum hemorrhage. The Jada is a device that we can insert into the uterus that with a low level vacuum will help the uterus contract down. It's made of soft, flexible silicone and you can see me here feeding it into the uterus. That green that you see there is represented in the vagina and it's a cervical seal. Filling this seal up helps to hold a vacuum within the uterus. Now, as I'm filling up that seal, let's talk about the Jada. Studies have shown that it's about 94% effective at controlling postpartum uterine bleeding, which is amazing. And I've used this and I love this device. You can see here that the seal is now filled up. We then connect the Jada device with this little tube that you see here to a suction or vacuum device. And look at that, the uterus is contracting down and it really does happen that quickly. 
With postpartum hemorrhage affecting about 5% of births, this is a great tool. Okay, if you watched all of that and now you're freaking out or you're pregnant and you're thinking, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I want you to know the vast majority of births are, are fabulous and don't need a whole lot of intervention. And I want you to know that you can give birth in almost whatever position you want, including for breech deliveries, you can give birth standing up or on your hands and knees. These were just one way to show you how to do these things. If you have any questions or concerns, drop me a comment, talk with your healthcare provider. Until next time.